Hi, hi, I am Nietzsche. I am a host of a podcast called Eternal Moodcast. It is a Sailor Moon Van Theories podcast. And I'm also an insomnia if you're into Cape Cod, but I'm a big into the group. I'm a cosplayer. I totally met people you thought that you were a mighty person. But, uh, okay. I was like, yes, Nietzsche does not go to bed early. I'm going to it. Oh, oh yes. Okay, we're going to shoot them back. But I'm a figure collector of femme. My favorite character is Sailor Neptune, and I am from Orlando, Florida. Oh, this is me. Oh, all right. I'm a Vina. I didn't study them pronouns. I have been wearing Japanese fashion for way too long. I am much older than I look. I have expensive tastes. I'm really not. What's what? Do not. Okay. okay. I'm a card cover soccer collector, too. Do not bring me to my house. <laughs> I mixed up the sailor colors were shrouded in darkness right now. I said, show off the color I'm wearing right now. Make sure. See, it we're all in it. It just looks like a color. And I currently live in Richmond, Virginia, although I also was from Florida. Yeah, it's in a very Florida panel. No, that's essentially Florida. That's fine. And then what else? Anything else we want to go over in it? Oh. Oh, yeah, we that's were, actually my notes. We met at Odenkong many years ago, at 2016, Odenkong is when we became friends randomly. We got put in a room together and yeah, we've been friends ever since. Yeah, been friends ever since. So the last just... roommate situation, he doubt was mentioned. What's the real? The real. <laughs> Ready. All right. Oh, I get to think about dumb one, y'all. So I really love Japanese fashion. I love talking about how it was and the ink. I mean, Japan in the 80s is different than what it is now. There was a bubble economy in the 80s. I'm sure a lot of y'all have heard about it. You've played like Yama the Zero to experience the first man. So the bubble economy led to the average Japanese person buying one of my favorite brand items. And one of the eight files that's really popular, as pictured here, was called French Casual. And it was very inspiring to buy a lot of the high end of couture French brands like Chanel. And this person's wearing our shell, if you look closely. Yeah. And so here's some examples of the sorts of styles that were not. And the 80s, on the, oh God, I got it. Far left, we've got body con dresses, which are very similar to what you think of these days when you think of body con dresses. The modern day, very tight-fitting, very sexy. Um, and we were really popular among, like, girls that went clubbing and activities for money. Not the but yes, that was a hairy popular that We loved like the lovely curly big gold chunk jewelry, not very up and down among like when in like the early twenties to like going out break. In the center, we got Paragap, which is short in Paradise Girl, uh, Paradise Girl. I feel like this. Sailor Moon, especially the anime, we've got like little like shorts, the little like cardigan, super reminiscent of the 90s. I have the like Ray's fashion. I feel like it's very Ray because you remember, have remembered Ray is her father is a politician. She's a very high end person. So this would make sense with her fashion. And like sneaker, it was like very directly inspired by like folks like lounging around on the and wearing like lovely so like you saw lots of like cute tans as well and on uh, the far right this should look familiar it looked at a lot of the uniforms that like men wear so in the universe this is french casual in a mask very inspired once again by Shino. had lots of extra buttons down cardigan scarves love like extra decoration Example of what it looked like on men. So the reason I'm probably not this is obviously when it started in 1992. So now the only 24 when we started. So she very much grew up with kind of style, this kind of style, and it went forward and she manga and the anime as well. I'll get into her, but the anime is a more like going on like mainstream, whereas the character herself is like very much enmeshed in both core and like higher end designer. And that like shows much more in the manga than it does 
in the end. I keep going. I know. Actually, I know. Oh, good. History. History. So, JJ Magazine was like the hot magazine at the time that popularized French casual among like younger folks in Japan. That cardigan's going to look really familiar because it's a Chanel cardigan. That puts her she wears it in another colorway. She draws Ray in it, I believe. I th- yeah, I think it was Ray. Yeah, yeah. She draws Ray in it. You're going to see it a lot. In fact, like, even the model's hair reminds me of Ray. Actually, it does. So the there's just a lot. There's a lot happening here. In the center, that is, like, more or less, like, what JJ's fashion looked like. Lots of, like, higher end designer bags. She's like, Louis Vuitton bag. Um, a really nice, like, cute pen. A blouse and like she, oh, um, this was very much of what you would see promoted at JJ Magazine. And then I want to draw in here very much like what they wear all the time in the anime, this sort of sporty casual. That's the oversized Letterman jacket, so like Nike, Adidas, like all the name brand Sailor J. Yeah, absolutely. And all of the like masculine human. So, like, yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. not the ones that are like, I am like the reincarnate. Yeah, that. <laughs> I didn't so much. So it would be for the fashion, fashion one and I'm the movie one. So no, we're going back and forth. That's why you invested both in the world. All right. So now you guys are getting in to see it in action. You guys see what we were meaning. Where, for example, if you look at, you, I believe you know some notes on Minako's outfit, the one with the. Uh, Related shorts. Yes. So I will show like more reference images of this, but this is like very reminiscent of Pink House for all of Girl Nashi. I'll get into it. I'm currently wearing things from those brands because I love that sort of thing, that sort of like silly collar, when that sort of, I don't know, like little house on the prairie, I think that kind of style. It was super popular. It was really popular in the 70s in the US, but even more popular in Japan and but you can see uh, Mercury wearing like this adorable little like Chanel adjacent suit on the far right. I don't know about you guys, but I was confused why Musaki had a P on her sweatshirt. Was it anybody else with me or was I alone? Okay, thank you. Somebody else was. It's Musaki. But I didn't know it was her pink house. It's Musaki. It was probably remnants of the pink house. I love making shirts or sweaters, then sweaters that just have giant pink on them. To this day, they still release them. Yes, you can still buy pink house clothing. Yes, I purchased. So, yeah, like, although I loved all of these, like that sailor collar again on Mercury on the far left. It's just so cute. So reminiscent of like French casuals, like preppy. Amazing, and it's like very much in line with what was like popular at the time. Right. All right, let's talk about the queen herself, the lover of Porsche and Chanel. Where do you go wrong? That's her on a Porsche. <laughs> Not in Chanel, but she's hugely in Chanel. Honestly, a fictional city, but her hair is in Chanel. We're not the Jake on her. Well, anyway, so written. If, if y'all, I can promise you rewatch the reread, so you won't notice Porsches everywhere. Yes, especially well, Hanukkah. She all of that. Oh, she did. Yeah, that's her. Oh, that's her. Yeah. So, Want to flex? She She's not from her own car. Blackout. Wow. Oh, there, there's a lot of photos of her like leaning on like this blue Porsche. It is her Porsche because it's also very Porsche. It's her Porsche. It's also very Porsche. It's like joy riding it. But now you guys know where Hanukkah gets her taste. Yes. That's from her. Ready? So I wanted to talk about a little bit, again, going back the history of it, about Takeuchi's inspiration. Again, she was born very much a child of the 80s. And what was big in the 80s was Tokusatsu, which, like, it pretty, like, common, right? Or Gachiman. That's, like, where even one layer of the Power Rangers, that's Tokusatsu. Like battles with like fun, like stunt work going on. And Tokusatsu was really big. And they realized, like, oh, hey, we're not making anything for the girly. What do the girlies like? They like magical shit. 
Oh, I'm so good with that. That, that, why do you guys want to come in with your mail tonight? Yeah, yes. I'm sorry, you got on this. I'm yeah. really sorry to chill in the audience. We're, yeah, we're, we're trying. We're probably sorry. I'm sorry. So anyways, so it was cool. I need to look at my notes. Look, this is the mouthful, and it's not even that name up there. No. A, E, Mast, Quantri. I will not translate Quantri. You can look it up yourself. Just saying, parents, please use caution. It's a kind of chicken, I guess. Just explain it to your kids that way. But anyways, La Belle Field Mast Poultry was a tokusok that was really popular to 80s. That was a no, We've got like a red mask. A We've got like a fun day. We've got a hose that looks like a And we've got like little transformation items on their belt. Sorry, it was the 80s. I can't find higher res imagery. But so this is what you get. And then there was also another, there was a series of movies that was really popular called Sukeban Deka. For those of you that don't know what Sukeban is, it's basically like emails from girl dates. So they more like she's awesome singing. They like can do butt. And they were like really cool doing it. And like, again, because it's gonna go with the way. Transformation. We can do the reveal. Because I'm. Why not? <laughs> I mean, need this with all the love in the world. Please, no. So, oh, there, there it is. So, what's funny is the Valve Fuel Map, you map, what tree? I'm not going to see that. There you go. There you go. What tree? Introduced like the. I actually looked on it. It was like a little tiny version of my main character. Sorry, Jimmy. Anyways, <laughs> now, that's why we've got the same. And that's why we've got like this like vibe to it. And that's why we got this like sweet girl gonna kick Rudy. And let's remember that Sailor Moon was not the original. Originally, it was Sailor V who was based in London who was fighting crime along with the police force. So it is a little bit more like the inspiration that we think about how Sailor V was also a Sailor Very day to day. She had a lot more until the ending of Sailor V, which I will not spoil if anyone has seen. Yes. So you can see a lot of it, especially in Sailor the poses carried over, the outlets carried over, she carried over. So, uh, so that bad bit. Uh, I'm gonna get some sick history. I've fallen something be interesting, okay? It's not a bit. Here's some old fashioned city in the cubes. Anyways, so, full dress code was something that started post World War II. There was basically a major like dress reformer whose name I'm the moment, but she was like really passionate about making sure that women were able to like young girls study brain into her clothes that were easier to move around. Originally, it would look like school uniforms in Japan look very much like what you're seeing on the left, which is a kimono with a hikama, usually a little bit shorter, so it's a little bit easier to walk around, but it is still like fairly restricted about it. supporting dress code experts as someone. It's okay, I find you about as comfortable as anything else. This was slightly argument for my game. And you looked at the French naval uniform, and we're like, hmm, this is easy to sew, they look really comfortable. We can update dress code for women from and girl to keep up with boys. So, tell me, Garrett. So, I was really excited to find this image because I went to Japan for the first April and I'm Osaka and it was the middle school that was letting out and, but everywhere I went and I was like oh my god not a creepy way just an all <laughs> and I they have all of the variations of their uniform on the website and I wanted to sell like this image because I also noticed like there's the classic like button down black outfit with the Mandarin color. They see a lot in Ellen Manga and Anna. But towards the red, lasers. And a slightly more like modern updated book. And what's really cool is a lot of them. And those can have gender neutral options that like allow everyone to wear whatever they want, which is really great. Within the like, uniform code. So that's why you see someone who's like more found green pants. Um, right, Matt. Well, this is specifically manga art. 
So you out and saw me in prototype, you saw me over here. And it's funny because you can see that, especially the prototype, it was very similar, especially from the waist up for her four. And then, of course, you got my days at Haruka and Nichiru in the Munkin school uniforms, which Christmas colors, it's funny. I didn't love it at first, but now I'm like so fond of it. So all of green is so good. It's so good. And then, of course, you got the wonderful inners and Ray, who goes to a Catholic school, does have a different uniform, as well as Lean and Co, who in the middle school does go to a different school. And then Jupiter has a uniform because she was too tall. So it's like very interesting reasons, but I thought it was really cool because that way Noko was able to give them all their own styles and more establish their characters. And what I'd also like to know is we should have our cover already in high school. Yes, right. No, okay. So right. they, middle high schoolers. I know they're middle schoolers on this side. It was in the middle. So technically, we good school is K through all the way through high school. Ah, uh, so it's like a combined. It's a combined school. They change their bows. That's about it. Out. And they're all like rich kids, right? Oh, it is like the top school of Tokyo, the time. So they are like the elite of the elite. And you have to have brains. And so this is reflective of Tokyo's school uniform fashion because usually the more prestigious the school is, the more buttoned up, the more laser involved it becomes. Like, and so usually the kind of like lower end schools that have the classic sailor uniform but a lot of folks try to aspire to be wearing like the really beautiful like button down blazer because that's like kind of associated with being like more on trend and like being wealthy and something that interesting is Hanukkah and Nichiru were actually first designed as Takaro Zuka actresses which is the reason for their aesthetics the song but they couldn't be Takaro Zuka actresses because of the age they would have had to have been post high school and because Noelle wanted them in the school setting, she put them, she made them younger and made them a violinist and a car eraser. The Porsche coming back. <laughs> it all leads back to that. All right, and now we have some more views of manga art images. So I'm letting you take this one because I, I loved all these images, but I she don't have, I just like them. You just like, like okay, so let's turn over on the right. So we have Luna, Artemis, and Diana. And it's very interesting because they only got animated human forms in the past few years and so turn on. Before that, you only saw you the Luna in the second movie. So it's interesting that like what they took from the manga and what they didn't take from the manga. You see a really different style. I'm a big fan also of PTSM, if anybody knows live action. Yeah. Was, yeah, like that deep in the movies. But I also think they did a great job there with establishing style with all the different characters and plush, and you know, will always be a big memory. So sorry, anytime I talk about Luna, I got to talk about plush Luna. I love GSM, so I'm all here for it. You And then this is examples of different artwork styles that Nautical would do for her manga art books. They had nothing to do with the actual series or they were not in it, but unlike Luna, Artemis, and Diana. But I thought it was cool that she did some fashion manga art panels so that it's Fun for like, chess players because like big booties will tuck. Like, it's well, oh, it's such an obscure. These are just different examples. I noticed she likes to put daisies with her sock. Yeah, I think uh, there's a flower language there. I need to brush up, but I think daisies were like yeah. very fun. And she makes a lot of sunscreen. Definitely. And then I believe the bottom left one is based on an artwork that you showed. Yes, it is. I forget the name of the artist but i believe it's called the lanterns yeah. it's literally like this really cool art like a photograph of like, a bunch of gestures like holding up these like big words and they're very much like posed in similar ways to we saw in chibia absolutely and if i believe you are ever listening to the manga art images there is a site called this dream and all of the books are up there finally recommend wonderful mood oh so good i love some of this definitely Okay, then, yeah. So I love to talk about and this your favorite. That's what right. right. is. And I think this is one one that a lot of people are aware of, but I like to cover um, it because, like, sometimes it's a surprise. But uh, yeah, certain these out of there is based off of the Dior Palladium dress, which is in the center. And it was basically modeled after Palladium's basically Roman columns. And it's really cool to see just how intricate the embroidery is and the beat work is on this. What's especially cool is, and he knows that Dior 
exhibition is coming to like Warnock in the Woods, they probably will have this roof on display. And I highly recommend going in person because it is absolutely stunning. There's a lot of details that Tuckery does not in Serenity's outfit. And I didn't show a picture showing the bottom because it isn't accurate to the outfit in the manga, but there's like these gorgeous tassels along the bottom and like more trims. It's just it's stunning. It's a stunning pink, and it's just so elegant. And then you can see it. Something like a one to one. Also, if you're ever wondering about the big bow, two things. One, it is the same bow that is on her super fuku, if you ever notice. And it is also be inspired by fairy wings. If you notice, there's a lot of fairies in Sailor Moon. So she wanted to give that magical fairy aesthetic to Serenity. Like very loosely based off of a Roberto Cavanchia design, which I'm not, I'm blocking it. You can see it at the bottom right. It's like this lovely gold piece. I actually got to see this in person a few years ago at the Met. Oh my gosh, what's it called? The Body. Heavenly Bodies. There we go. The Heavenly <laughs> Body. Thank you. So yeah, it's stunning in person and can totally see what the inspiration is. You can see the complete work in that manga panel translating down here so it's really cool that this was like directly inspired all right and then we got some more cool fashion so we always i always love their swimsuits i think sailor moon has some of the most iconic swimsuits because each character has a very distinctive style yes it's a little pile of rangers and they all wear their color but it's really cute and it gives them a very distinctive if you see it you can put it together which i think is such a brilliant that Nogo did to really establish character. I mean, let's be real. Like, when I was a kid growing up in the 90s, I picked my favorite Sailor Scout based on my bigger color. So I was obsessed with gray growing up because I had long hair. And I went red and purple. Easy. Oh, easy. The edit. I think it's, it's also, also fun. It's just a way, like, to cosplay, but still be able to hide movable pieces that, like, you can be comfortable in. You can be recognizable. I just think it's, like, such a cool thing. And I do like that, like, they're in a variety of cost of outfits. Like, here they're, like, we got a button-down shirt and a long pair of pants being when we have a long shirt. And it's, I just think it's so cool how they mix and match. And I think it's really, like, he's forgotten about how I'm, both the anime and the manga, never trying to stick them in the same outfit over and over again outside of their uniforms and their information out. Like, just like no people. They have a wardrobe, and they wore clothes that they found them really cute. And honestly, like, all the scouts are, like, pretty well on off. And she's like, oh, they're, like, even higher. They're than even them. higher off. The helicopters, like, you have a lot of them. And they're fashion and and original. And it's what makes it, like, visually interesting as well. Because you're not just asking to out, but again. Yeah, like, it, it's a... All right. And then it comes the sweater. But then have... There's a, like, that sweater again. So this is all Chanel. You can see it from Jupiter's swimsuit and the bottom breast photo is basically a, a Chanel swimsuit. She especially liked to draw the outers in Chanel because they were older. So she made them look more luxurious. But like Venus and Mars got be non-luxury outfits. And I think it's because they just have more grown up vibe on all the inner scouts, I feel. Fun fact, that middle picture is actually from Sailor B. Ah, yeah. so Nautica was doing her Chanel leaving back then. Also, that pearl belt is so cute. So it gets cut off in this, but there is like the Chanel logo at the bottom of the pearl belt in the original photo. And I think she like put like, like a star on her I mean, There's some other like pattern at the end. I think it's a moon and Hanukkah also wears the same belt. And by the way, the outfits are different in the manga, mostly from the 90s era. If you re I just reread the manga and I'm rewatching the 90s anime right now for my podcast, and they are completely different, but the style is somehow is still the same. It's the same cloth, but different vibe. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think the manga had a lot more, again, more like high end representation, whereas like the anime was like more set on like making sure they were wearing clothes that were like very relatable and powerful to like the kids watching. Yeah, so they didn't try to go super ham, but. There are some exceptions later. All right. So now we're going to do a comparison one. So we had three of the most iconic. You will definitely, you guys have seen the middle dress. 
everybody has seen the middle dread <laughs> about Gallagher recently. Hmm, that's weird. Um, but these are three examples. We have Hanukkah and Michiru and Versace. Versace, thank you. Don't make me pronounce the names. Versace. I'm just saying that for you. Versace. Thank you. And then we have Pluto. And in the, I think it was Lily Rose Depp. Really? Great. Yeah, they recently wore it. It's Chanel. And Lily Rose Depp wore it. There's a lot of people who wore it, but she was the most recent person to wear it at the Met Gala a few years ago. And then we have Hotaru, and she is a beautiful cutout with me in the sleeve, which I believe. And that's Mugler, and we're going to talk a lot about Mugler. And Mugler comes back. But to show you guys, on bring down, there it is. You guys needed your cosplay references. Here you go. So, <laughs> you're in the garage trial, so real outfits. So, the Mugler image is unfortunately really like green. Rain, because there's only a catwalk in the out that is an awkward quality because it is from the 80s and 90s. That is like the best you can do, but I highly recommend looking up 90s New Blair catwalks. There are so many icons. New Blair was someone who always made it a point to work with people who like do not fit the mold for modeling and were like just outside of the norm. And was and to tell his dad very recently, rest in peace, like he was dedicated to that. So really cool to see so much there and so on. And it's funny, I had never imagined that Hanukkah was wearing a dress. Because of the way Hanukkah is posed. So when Amina showed me that image and blew my mind, he was a layered outfit. I'm not an for Sasha normally, but that outfit. All right. And then we got some more manga artwork that we wanted to talk about. So starting on the left, it's very reminiscent almost of that boxy style you were talking about. Oh, so I forgot to mention. Yes, I think the images in this. I thought most people have this in their mind's eye. The princess outfit are also a Versace number. Madonna, um, there's a really iconic image of Madonna, like, sitting in frost from a Doberman. And she's wearing a dress that has, like, very familiar, like, couple chons on the straps and, like, a weird one. And those are the princess dresses. But then we have Chibi Yusa in the middle, and I always like to talk about Chibi Yusa because her hair is really interesting. So if you think they were wondering, Chibi Yusa's dongles look just a little bit different from Sailor Moon's, right? So it's because Wasabi was literally meant to, like, the rabbit. So whenever Nopo got her second chance with Chip Yusa, if you notice, they're more rabbit ear shaped. And that's why she has a different hairstyle. Also, again, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but her central outfit reminds me a lot of Olive Girl and Mickey Cow's fashion. And I will share some images soon, but just keep that sort of like Lolita adjacent image in mind because all the girl and pink house are basically the mother, the parents, the grandmothers, the mamas. <laughs> And then we have the wonderful Starlight Captains and Titan. And they're a. Oh, I or she. It looks like a cheap, but honestly, for me, it just it very much gives like 70s revival vibes, which are really big in the night. Yeah, definitely 70s vibes. With, if you think about it, well, well, Jellyfish cut. I have a jellyfish cut. Okay, I have the Starlight. Thread. You have the Starlight thread. I love it. I know. I have an open up thing. Freaking hot. And then this is now a great example of all of the different styles of this different senshi. And if you look, there's daisies again with usagi. So it's a lot of flower language. With Malko, if you look at this, look at boxy kind of masculine vest with a floral print. Look at that big oversized flower brooch. I'm pulling out reason. Yes. But we've got Oh, a girl like big moments. I tell Otacon that you want me to do a panel on just this. They rejected it. <laughs> but I love talking about 80s and 90s Japanese fashion because it basically takes the way for a lot of the like, see at your anime cons or just like out and about. A lot of alternative fashions go their roots thin. We have some, which I adore. So we've got, so all in print was a mad scheme. That was really popular in the 80s and into the 90s, and sort of eventually shuttered. And one of the main brands that was always featured in it was by a designer named Hanako's and a brand. And taken the brand, taken Japan by storm. There were a bunch of knockoff brands that were just trying to emulate the people style. There were so many brands trying to do this like soft, layered, hot, world prints all over it. 
So in the center and on the right are people wearing cacaos. The rightmost image are straight up catalog images from the 90s. Look at that brooch with the date on it. Where's the... Hmm, look, look at the vast sort of layer. Look. Huh, interesting. Look at those sh There's just a lot going on. That's very reminiscent of what... If any joke, but I, I will go ahead and throw that out there. In court campus, I see it in so many different things. So, yeah, I absolutely adore the style. And it's like a style that never really had the largest fan base outside of Japan. Because a lot of folks just think it's like prairie girl revival sort of stuff, like gun sag. Like folks think they call it like cottage horror. But yeah, like this is where like that like really started. And once you like notice this sort of like adorably from being by, just see it and everything. Right. And I'm also wearing a, like a pig of Jason Brand. Okay, right, so let's talk a little bit more about the poo-poos. If you guys notice, all of the poo-poos are a little bit different. I actually have a fan theory on Saturn's, and you know, she's the only one who gets petals for her shoulder bit. And I have a theory that's because she is one of the original. If you remember, Saturn is actually not like one of the scouts and you see she actually comes back and she even says, oh, he's the uninvited guest. My theory is that she's from a past time and that's what the Fugos used to look like. And then in the middle, we have the classic. They have the short bows. They have round brooches. And they have nothing except for Pluto does have a little dot on her choker. And then we have Sailor Moon's eternal form. And that's whenever those big bubble sleeves come in. It's when she gets a triple skirt. Everybody else gets a double skirt. So you can really see the Fungus evolving with the characters throughout the series. And... Looks like pottery. Ha, ah, we're back to the glare. Trigger warning, that's Ivana Trump. And the center. <laughs> but, but it's, it's important. It's important to the history, though. Yes, it is. So, Mugler was, like, kind of the main source of inspiration for a lot of the villains. Like, literally, going down the list, there's so many. I can be because I'm be here forever. I feel like <laughs> I can hold this myself. And, yeah, you should. It's... <laughs> but these are both Mugler dies, and again, you see them on iconic villains. Over here on the left, we have Queen Beryl, which dress was directly inspired. If you look at the neckline especially, because I know as a cosplayer, I'm like, how do you make that cut out? Like, why? Just why? With that, that's not ready. So my inner cosplayer just came out for a minute. And then to the right, we have Sailor Galaxia from the Cosmos arc. And honestly, that design is just wild. But then you look at the inspo and you're like, okay, I get it. Yeah. Mugler also had an exhibit in Brooklyn that wrapped up fairly recently. So if you do see a Mugler exhibit in your neighborhood, you should go check it out. Because then you'll figure out how to sew these things. You can look at them. We've also got masculine Mugler outfit that I've also translated into awesome outfits for yeah. the bones. It's funny when you see it like next to each other. It's because I didn't know any of these were inspired directly at first, but then I look at the picture side by side and it's so funny. <laughs> so, it's so funny. Yeah, so we have the four heavenly kings and they're all basically like different versions of this album. Yes. And Mugler got a little bit of stanky eye for this collection because of Stalinist uniforms. That's fun. We don't like to talk about things as if they operate in a vacuum, folks. But yeah, anyways, fun. They look cool. <laughs> and then here's a couple more direct inspiration. So we have on the left, like a lady, which eat the pose. Yes. You say it well wrong. I practice. And then uh, the right, we have um, Calabrus. Thank you, Calabrus. I, can, I can't say her name. How do you say Calabrus? Collaborist. Oh, okay. I've written it. I was trying to be on the right now. Oh, yeah. So that's Christian Lacroix. Lacroix. Not Lacroix, like the water. Lacroix. It's spelled the same way. But yeah, you can totally see that one to one comparison of the corset. There's even like the little like buttons down the front and like that armor vibe to it. And I didn't include a photo of the back. But the bow that the model is wearing in the centermost image is identical to the bow in that concept. So 
again, prepping you to like I like high fashion and like the villains get the cooler outfits. The villains are high end. <laughs> the villains are like we drop money, we like contact the designers, and we're like, I'd like you to make something custom for me. Get this up here, we said one way. We win. I'm sorry. We thought we were being a long, long. I know. We were like, I have so many images. And yeah, anyways, this is our social. Yeah, so if you guys have questions, oh. we're here for questions. So let me use this chair so y'all can see our sources. Oh, yeah. We also have our resources ready for you. I really recommend Cooking with Hamsters blog. You can literally just look up Cooking with Hamsters, Sailor Moon, and the blog post should come up. They're the ones really like do a lot of the research, like show the one to one comparison. So, like, well done, like Pluto's Chanel outfit and Serenity's Dior outfit. You find, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh. And thank you, everybody who came. Yeah, thank you guys so much. So much. If you did, I saw you rolling and I was like, hey, you're not just like, okay, so actually, the copyright thing is wow, so funny. So it's a transformative word because a lot of trips is not one to one, so it's fine. Also, there are no costumes or like mass production sale. That are like inspired by a lot of English war things, so they're usually all under too large. Or when Moria and instruction is like very different, so they don't always step on one's toes. Also, a lot of these gifts point are like 20 per year, and so a bit of, but the sign of the moved all on and not out of like about their IP. There you go. Go ahead and go back. Oh, King and Vivian and the Lavender, the Lavender Dream. So I actually think it's really inspired by Wedge Kajla. And so like you get that fun Mandarin color and the embroidery, which was like very much like that vibe, especially on masculine silhouettes. And if you remember, I remember there's a big line about lavender. We, you know, but Pluto, because Pluto was actually, it's Kikin and the Pluto was in love with King and Dimian because she was stuck in the door and the only people who came to visit her would should be using King and Dimian. So she actually says when she's dying, I forget what time she's dying one of the times. And she <laughs> says, yeah, they come back. But she's like, that Latin is, oh my gosh, I wish I would have had the image to say, but it's, yes, it was in Sailor Lenar. Thank you. And so I think that's a cool thing that it's like referenced. So I'm wondering if that was also part of the inspiration. And then, can I mic Absolutely. So the, the picture that was shown before that she referenced the lanterns. But it's actually a reference to a painting called The Lantern Bears, which is by uh, the artist Maxfield Parrish. Maxfield Parrish was an illustrator who did a lot of advertising work. His art has been an inspiration for a lot of artists. If you're a fan of, say, Fate Grand Order, Paco is a big fan of Maxfield Parrish as well, and Arduino Alter's final art is very definitely a send up to that. 